That's good. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the First United Presbyterian Church. We're so thankful to be gathered for in-person worship on this Palm Sunday. We want to remind you that our goals at First United Presbyterian Church remain the same, to continue sharing the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and to do so in a safe manner for all members and guests of the church. As such, we will wait to continue to pass the offering plates and ask you to prayerfully place your offering in the plates before or after worship. As always, please be mindful and respectful of those who are gathering with you as we continue to share the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. There is a regular meeting of session tomorrow, Monday, March 25th at 6.30 p.m. The office will be closed on Friday, March 29th in observance of Good Friday. Thank you to everyone who volunteered for the Easter egg extravaganza yesterday and to everyone who donated candy. We had a chilly but fun time playing games, doing crafts, and hunting for candy-filled Easter eggs. There is a now to help support the ministry of the Church Blessing Box, as well as our local food pantry. Please consider how you can help make a difference to the families in our community. Please plan to come together for worship this Thursday, March 28th at 7 p.m. for Monday Thursday. We will have a tenebrae service of shadows with communion. Please don't miss this special time to remember and reflect on the sacrifice of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We will also have a sunrise service on Easter Sunday at 7 a.m. with a communion service at 11 a.m. 
Let us praise God together. Are there any other announcements that anyone would like to share this morning? The property committee is going to get together this Saturday to do some of our uh, planned preventive maintenance ideas and to give the newer members, the younger members on the property committee <laughs> so they know uh, where things are and what needs to be done. And we're also inviting anyone who cares to uh, find out a little bit about the church and where things are and uh, what needs done. We, we have a monthly preventive maintenance list and most of the people on the committee were getting pretty old so we need some younger people to know where things are and what needs to be done. So if anybody wants to join us, they're more than welcome. We're going to get together at 11 o'clock uh, this Saturday. Thank you. Are there any other announcements? Okay, today is the last day to order the Easter flowers if you haven't already, um, so they can be here for next week. <coughs> and now my friends, with confidence in God's amazing love for all of us, let us lift our voices together and worship the risen Lord. Please respond in the call to worship. In life and in death, we belong to God. Through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit, we trust in one triune God, whom alone we worship and serve. We trust in Jesus Christ. Fully human, fully God, Jesus proclaimed the reign of God, calling all to repent and believe the gospel. We trust in God, whom Jesus called Abba, Father. In sovereign love, God created the world good, but we rebel against God and hide from our Creator. Yet God acts with justice and mercy to redeem creation. We trust in God, the Holy Spirit. The Spirit justifies us by grace through faith and sets us free to love God and neighbor. In gratitude to God, Empowered by the Spirit, 
We strive to serve Christ in our daily lives and pray, come Lord Jesus. As we prepare our hearts to remember and celebrate the triumphal entry of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ on Palm Sunday, I invite any young people or anyone who's young at heart to please gather at the back. And we're going to have our young folks who are going to lead us in the procession of the palms during our singing of Hymn 197. But before that, listen now to the word of our Lord from Psalm 118. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say, his steadfast love endures forever. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord, the righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Save us, we beseech you, O Lord. O Lord, we beseech you, give us success. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God and he has given us light. Bind the festal procession with branches up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will give thanks to you. You are my God, I will extol you. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. And now, my friends, I invite you to stand as you are able and let us join together in celebrating as we sing together hymn 197, Hosanna, loud Hosanna. Thank you. Hear the call to confession. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, order your disciples to stop. He answered them, I tell you, if these were silent, the stone would shout out. Unfortunately, there are many times when the way we live our lives does not shout out God's love, but is selfishly silent. Before God and one another, let us boldly confess our sins and ask for God's grace and forgiveness. Even in our relationship with you, we too easily question what others do and get. Instead of taking care of our own business, take away our bitterness. Help us to truly rejoice with those who are rejoicing. 
Forgive us for being selfish, not self-giving. Please remind us that serving and following you requires us to work, but that work is a fruitful labor. Help us, O oh God, to discipline ourselves so we will not fall into the trap of envy. Give us grateful hearts, we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In everlasting love, the God of Abraham and Sarah chose a covenant people to bless all the families of the earth. Hearing their cry, God delivered the children of Israel from the house of bondage. Loving us still, God makes us heirs with Christ of the covenant. Like a mother who will not forsake her nursing child, like a father who runs to welcome the prodigal home, God is faithful still. My friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are all forgiven. Amen. Please stand as you are able and join in singing the Gloria Patria. Peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Let us pass the peace of Christ by waving the right hand of friendship to one another.
The first scripture reading comes from Isaiah, chapter 50, verses 4 through 9a. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear, to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me, who will declare me guilty. Our New Testament lesson for this morning comes from the book of Philippians, chapter 2, verses 5 through 11. This, these verses are widely regarded as the very first hymn of the early church. Listen now to the word of the Lord. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of the Lord, and thanks be to God. Let us pray. Gracious, holy, and loving God, we give you thanks for this day. This is the day that you have made, and so we will rejoice and be glad in it. Some days, O God, you know that it is easier for us to rejoice and be glad, and we pray that you would help this to be one of those days, that we would turn our face to the sun that is shining through the beauty of these stained glass windows, and we would turn our hearts to the beauty of your love shining through the risen sun our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We pray that you would bless our time together, that you would open our hearts, our minds, and our ears on this Palm Sunday, that we would know your love for us is very real, and we would trust in you for the days ahead, knowing that you will be with us no matter what. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. What does it mean to be successful? Have you ever wondered that? I've often pondered that question over the last 20 or so years, ever since my high school senior classmates decided to vote me as most likely to succeed. Before you laugh too hard, As the late, great Toby Keith once said, I'm not as good as I once was, but I was good once as I ever was. But in all seriousness, I've wondered, what would I need to look like to be considered successful? What would my life need to look like in order for that vote to be true, that I had succeeded. What does it look like? What does it mean to be successful? One day a young man who was confused and directionless in life was walking in a park. He saw a well-dressed man, a a well-to-do older man, sitting on a bench feeding the birds and enjoying the beautiful scenery. 
He walked up to the older man and says, Sir, you look like someone who's led a successful life. Do you mind telling me what your secret to success is? The older gentleman said, Sure, Sonny, come on over, have a seat. I remember I was just about your age without a dollar to my name. But one day I was walking in a park, much like this one, and I found a nickel on the ground. I picked up that nickel and I invested it in an apple. I spent the entire day polishing that apple and at the end of the day I sold that apple for 10 cents. The next morning I invested those 10 cents in two apples. I spent the entire day polishing them and sold them at the end of the day for a dime each. The next day I bought three apples and again spent the whole day polishing them. Then my uncle died and left me two million dollars. <laughs> the secret to success. What does it mean to be successful? What does your life have to look like in order to have succeeded. I see some of you uh, earlier in the service making some smirks, and I think some of you might be wondering, in addition to what it means to be successful, what in the world is there doing a picture of a big blue genie from the movie Aladdin doing as the sermon title slide? I apologize in advance if you've already figured it out because that would mean that you have the same mind in you as I have and that should be wished upon no one. <laughs> when I was a kid watching Saturday morning cartoons back when life was easy and things made sense, there would be these quick little commercials aimed at kids that featured the voice of Robin Williams as the genie from Aladdin. They would show some new invention that uh, a kid had made or some revolutionary way of thinking or doing something and the genie would say, great minds think. And then there was this pregnant pause. And I don't know, if, does anybody else remember seeing these commercials when you were a kid? Maybe I'm just the only one. But I remember the first time I saw the commercial and I spoke into the pause. I finished the sentence, great minds think alike. But that's not what the genie said after the pause. The genie said, great minds think for themselves. And I always wondered about that and it stuck with me over the years even to the point when I was a freshman in college and learned that Socrates supposedly said the unexamined life is not worth living, that I eventually changed to simply say, not great minds think alike or great minds think for themselves, simply great minds think. Something simple, but I don't know how many people think all that often. And as we read our passage, this first hymn from the church in the Philippi that says that we are to have the same mind in us that is in Jesus Christ, the greatest mind, I think we should say, not great minds think alike or great minds think for themselves, great minds think like Jesus. Easier said than done. This morning we had our palm waving, just like we try to do every year, as a reminder of what the jubilant crowds did 2,000 years ago in the streets of Jerusalem. We join in their celebration. We add our voices to their loud hosannas. We exult in the victory of this day, the triumphal entry of our conquering king. Just like them, we feel that success is at hand. The crowds could taste it 
They could feel it in the air. Christ the conqueror was about to overthrow their oppressive Roman rulers. The messianic king was going to lead the horde to victory. And the spoils of war would be had by all those singing and shouting. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. They could feel success. The crowd back then, just like so many still today, they knew what it means to be successful. They knew what it would look like to be victorious. So they celebrated, they cheered with their whole heart, and they shouted, Alleluia, Hosanna! never realizing that their understanding of success was not God's understanding of success. Not knowing that God was about to give them what they needed instead of what they wanted. And a few short days, when success to the crowd seemed lost, they would change their shouting from praise him, praise him to Crucify him, crucify him. You and I know what success looks like in the eyes of the world. But the question for us today is, what does success look like in the eyes of God? What does it mean to have the same mind in you that was in Jesus Christ? Really, it's kind of a silly question to ask because Paul tells us what it means to have the same mind in us as Jesus, to have that same great mind. It's almost the exact opposite of what the world tells us. Paul says that you have to humble yourself. You have to stop thinking you know as much of God's plan as he does. You have to stop trying to turn yourself into your own God. You have to submit to the authority of the risen Lord Jesus Christ. You have to bend the knee. You have to say out loud that you are not in charge. Easier said than done. I recently read a book with a title that's right up my alley and that it's kind of ridiculous. It's called The Chicken Runs at Midnight. Seems like something I would try to write. But it's a story about some of the greatest things in life. Faith, family, and fastballs. It's the godly redemption story of a broken man, Rich Donnelly. Now, if you are a Pirates fan from back in the late 80s and early 90s, you might recognize that name. Rich Donnelly grew up in the Ville, a.k.a. Steubenville, Ohio. Rich grew up with an abusive, controlling father who made it clear to Rich that success in life meant one thing and one thing only. That was to become a professional baseball player. Rich worked harder than anyone else, partly because he thought if he was good enough, it would finally make his dad happy. Or at least his dad wouldn't hit him because he struck out in Little League. Now, I'm not ruining anything by telling you how this book kind of gets to the end. It's the journey in this book that is the real story. But as a child and a teenager, Rich prayed every day, not just to become a professional baseball player, but he specifically prayed to God that one day he could be a third base coach and send in the winning run to clinch the World Series. Rich continued to work harder than anyone else and became a pro ball player. He became a manager for a minor league team, and then one day he got a call from Jim Leland to be the third base coach for the Pittsburgh Pirates. Finally, 
he had succeeded in life? Or had he? He thought that he had finally achieved success, but on his way he had destroyed his family. He had become the father he had tried to avoid when he was a kid. His own four children, first a son, then a daughter named Amy, then two more boys, saw in him what he saw in his own father. But then one day when Rich's daughter was almost 18, she was diagnosed with terminal brain cancer. And although Rich had reconciled with the kids and spent summers with them at baseball parks, he was still using the world's measuring stick to determine success. He was still determined to send in that run from third base to win the World Series, no matter what or who it cost. But as Rich's daughter was getting closer to losing her fight, She asked her dad one day on a car ride home from the ballpark, what do you say when you're standing there yelling at third base? Do you say things like the chicken runs at midnight? And everybody in the car laughed and laughed because no one had ever heard anything like that before. It was ridiculous. So out of left field, but it became the Donnelly family motto. And soon that's how they said goodnight to each other. Love you. The chicken runs at midnight. It was their own special thing to the point when Amy passed away, they actually had it put on her gravestone. Fast forward a few years and Rich is the third base coach now for the Marlins, still with Jim Leland. And a rookie player new to the Marlins named Craig Council has affectionately been given the nickname the Chicken because of his very awkward batting stance where he flaps his arms and his skinny little legs make him look like a chicken trying to hit a fastball. And now we find ourselves in the only extra, the third ever extra innings World Series game seven ever. Craig Council comes up to bat And it's only after looking at the tape that they realized that Craig Council left the dugout and began walking to the batter's box at the stroke of midnight. He got on base and found his way at third base, standing next to Rich Donnelly, who would end up being there with him as he ran in from third base to win and clinch Game 7 of the World Series. As Rich hugged his one son, Tim, Tim pointed to the clock and said, Dad, the chicken ran at midnight. A nonsensical phrase from his dying daughter, but a message from God that burst through Rich's mind and changed his understanding of what it meant to succeed at life. God is still speaking to you today, maybe not through some big, momentous event like Game 7 of the World Series, but God is still speaking to you, reminding you of what is important, what it means to truly succeed in life. Rich immediately began calling family members and apologizing for the wrongs that he had committed throughout his chase for success. He realized that God still loved him and had used his daughter's love, his daughter's words, to make it clear to him that even he wasn't too broken to experience the redeeming love of Jesus Christ. Have you found yourself chasing success in the world? Have you found yourself maybe going along with the crowd, saying, praise him, praise him, only then to turn around and yell, crucify him, crucify him? Are you sacrificing family for money? Are you being selfish instead of selfless? 
Do you find yourself too busy to lend a helping hand when someone calls and asks for help? Maybe you've gotten out of the rat race. Maybe you are now retired. But you look back on your life and you see the broken trail behind you. Too many hours in the office missing dinner. Too many times out of town chasing that almighty dollar. Too many times becoming the person that you swore you would never become. No matter how far down the road to worldly riches or your own personal success, no matter how far down that road you find yourself, it's not too late to turn around and say the same words that Jesus taught the disciples. Thy will be done. Not my will, not your will. Not the world's will. Thy will be done. Even if you've given in to society's siren song of success, you are not too broken to experience the redeeming love of Jesus Christ. The beauty and power of Palm Sunday for me is not in the the songs that we sing, the palm branches that we wave, the loud alleluias, the loud hosannas. The beauty and the power of Palm Sunday is that the same people who were cheering Jesus on for their version of worldly success, that Christ would conquer their enemies, that they would get a part in the spoils, that their enemies would be driven out before them, the same people who were shouting his praises, who were dancing in the streets because they could taste success, those same people who would then go on to shout, crucify him. Those are the exact broken people for whom Christ died. You are the exact person for whom Christ died. No matter where you find yourself on this day, Jesus Christ is coming to you right where you are, saying, I love you, and lifting you up because he won't leave you there. You are a broken person, but you are whom Christ died for, not so you could taste worldly success, but so that you could experience the hope of salvation, the hope of salvation. So as you go forth and enjoy the rest of this beautiful Palm Sunday, Think not on worldly success or material riches. Have the same mind in you that was in Jesus Christ. A mind of humility. A mind that seeks to please God. A mind that says, thy will be done. Because great minds think like Jesus. Amen. Now I invite you to stand as you are able and let us join together in singing the hymn, The Old Rugged Cross.
Please be seated. Now we come to a time in our worship when we can lift up our joys and our concerns before one another and before the God who loves us. Are there any joys or concerns that anyone would like to lift up this morning? Yes. So it was the ACL. Okay. So prayers for Jillian McCarty. She's having ACL surgery this week. So prayers for Jillian. Yes. Yes, Harlan. So give thanks for a safe procedure, safe surgery for Jackie, but continued prayers as she's recovering and recuperating. Pray for strength and so ease from pain for Jackie. So absolutely. My friend Amy, she was in the emergency room yesterday. She's been having health problems for over a year. She's seen like 27 doctors that oh, we wow. can figure out what's going on. So she's going to be going to Cleveland Clinic this yeah. week. So we're hoping to put her in for him. Okay. So Johnny's asking for prayers for her friend Amy, who's been having health problems for way too long and can't figure out what's going on. So she's going to be going to the Cleveland Clinic uh, and a we pray for some clarity and some answers as to how to move forward and get healthy. Yes, Mary Lou. Okay, so Mary Lou's asking for prayers for Susan who had a lung transplant 10 weeks ago, um, is in the hospital, is gonna need some more, uh, some more Work is going to have to happen. So prayers for Susan and her doctors and everybody caring for her. Yes, Janice? Okay. Okay. <laughs> so Janice has a joy. After three boys, it's going to be a girl in September, be a grandma again. So just get ready. Remember, we don't want to spoil, we want to pamper. There's a difference. Okay. <laughs> uh, I do have a, a joy and a concern. Also, yesterday was the retirement dinner for uh, Craig Kephart, who is retiring as the executive presbyter for Washington Presbytery. Craig was here two weeks ago to lead us in worship and give thanks to God for that. Uh, but he is retiring in one week and uh, executive presbyters are doing their job well if nobody knows what they're doing their job well at. And so we're about to find out a lot of the work that Craig has done behind the scenes, and it's going to be a lot of work that people are going to have to kind of fill in. So prayers for, uh, for Craig as he celebrates his retirement, but please pray for the leadership of council for Washington Presbytery as well as the uh, administrative assistant for Washington Presbytery, Amy Dilley, uh, does a lot of work and we need to make sure that she doesn't get overwhelmed and that we take care of her and pray for her during this time of transition. My friends, we know that God hears our prayers. God answers our prayers too. Sometimes yes, sometimes no, and sometimes not just yet. But we trust in God's amazing love for each of us. With that confidence, let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for this time together, for this opportunity to lift our voices in song and praise to you, for this opportunity to sit and gaze at the beauty of this sanctuary and have our spirits lifted to you as we listen to the beautiful music that surrounds us, as our eyes are filled with the sunlight that streams through the stained glass windows May we be reminded of your un unending love for us, that you have created this beautiful world for us to enjoy and to be reminded of your great love whenever we look at the flowers blooming, hear the birds singing, see the sunrise, hear of a new baby being born. You have blessed us beyond our understanding. Our capacity to acknowledge all the ways that we have blessed is woefully short of what you deserve, O oh God. And so we thank you for your grace, your mercy, and your forgiveness 
for all the times when we fall short of the glory you have called us to. We give you thanks for this Palm Sunday and the reminder that Jesus Christ is victorious, just not in the way that anyone expected at that time. Sometimes, O oh God, we still struggle with the understanding of Jesus Christ victorious as a suffering servant. We resist your call to pick up our own cross and follow in the way of our Lord, thinking it's too dangerous or too difficult. We would rather stay in the comfort of our home or the, even the comfort of this sanctuary. Fill us, O God, with the power and strength of your Holy Spirit so that we cannot sit idly by as we see a broken world around us. Inspire within us what we need to do in order to make a difference in your name in this, in this community, in this country, in this world. Help us to not be so overwhelmed by the forest of problems that we would avoid the problematic trees right in front of us. Help us to make a difference in the small moments, in the small joys, in the life of family and friends and co-workers, in the strangers that we interact with at the grocery store. Help us to be a shining light of your love so that all would know that Jesus Christ is the Lord, that at the end every knee would bow and every tongue would proclaim the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We pray, O oh God, that you would be with us during this holy week, that you would help us to pause and not just leap from Palm Sunday to the joy of Resurrection Easter, but to remember what Jesus sacrificed for us, the passion of our Lord, so that we could have new life. You know, O oh God, that we are a broken people. You know what we struggle with. You know the temptations that we too easily give into. And so we take a moment now to lift up our prayers that we have brought with us in the silence of our hearts to you. We pray for healing and wholeness in the lives of those who are dear to us, who are struggling this day, whether it be for whatever problems they have brought, whatever struggles they have, whatever difficulties, we pray, O oh God, that you would lift their pain, that you would bring your peace that passes understanding into their heart of hearts, and that you would make us your hands and feet in this world. Remind us that you have blessed us so that we can joyfully be a blessing in the lives of those around us. We pray all of this, O oh God, using the words that Jesus taught the disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. For whatever reason, I wasn't one of the people chosen to give special remarks at Craig Kephart's retirement last night. I can't understand why. So I had to save my bad joke for last night for today. So Harlan was there. Harlan heard it. So he's already shaking his head. Um, so why is it so hard to get clergy to retire? Because you can't put them out to pastor. Yes. <laughs> uh, some of you are wondering, when's he going to retire? Is it almost time? <laughs> My friends, God has blessed us richly. So often the blessings uh, that God has given to us are not 
a house, a car, or clothes. The blessings that God has so richly given to us are the people in our lives, the family and the friends, those with whom we go on this journey with. Look around and see the blessings in your life and give thanks to God for the love that he has shown to you through this church family, through your own family. That is God's greatest blessing to you, apart from our Lord Jesus Christ. With thanksgiving for all that God has given to us, let us now present our morning gifts, tithes, and offerings. Please stand as you're able as we sing the doxology. Let us pray. O Lord, how the people in the streets of Jerusalem desire on this day to put a crown on your head and a scepter in your hand. How they desire to enthrone you in a palace and follow you into battle against the Romans. O Lord Jesus, how they misunderstood your kingdom. But we praise and we thank you that on this Palm Sunday we can celebrate you for who you are, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the suffering servant sent to save us from ourselves. As this holy week begins, we pray, O God, that you would continue to be at work within us and you would take this offering and use it as a blessing in your name so that we can help do our part to make true the words of the very first hymn that every knee would bow and every tongue would proclaim that Jesus Christ is the risen Lord. Remind us of your love, O God, this day, and make us your servants as we love those around us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. My friends, as we begin this Holy Week, I do have a challenge for you. I'm going to challenge you to take your bulletin with you. Don't just throw it in the garbage today. But as you see, we have our prayer list that's in our bulletin. And my challenge for you is each day of this Holy Week that you would take time to say the names individually on our prayer list. Pray for them by name. We believe in the power of prayer. As James says, the prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective, and that righteous person is not me or you, but it is our risen Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray for one another. Let us love one another in the name of our Lord. The grace of God the Father, the peace of the Holy Spirit, and the love of our Lord Jesus Christ is with you right now and always will be. Amen. Amen.